Welcome back to Barbecue and Bottles. And today we're gonna to be doing another steak experiment. And on today's experiment, we're gonna be doing a traditional salt and pepper ribeye over charcoal. And we're gonna put that up against a steak that we use umami flavor in. So this is umami seasoning from Trader Joe's. So we're gonna use that on this steak. We'll have our control steak over here and we'll see which one we prefer better in the end. So if you're into that kind of thing, stick with us. So before we jump into this, umami, it's actually one of the five base taste profiles that your tongue can detect. And those five are salt, sweet, sour, bitterness, and then of course, umami. Now umami is present in a lot of foods, meat being one of them. Now the other food that has a lot of umami flavors in it are mushrooms. So when you look at the ingredients here, we've actually got mushroom as the fourth ingredient and it's porcini mushroom specifically. Now before we season the steak, I wanna make sure that we're not gonna over salt this one. So I wanna taste this because salt's the first ingredient, I just wanna see the level of saltiness before we actually apply any additional salt to our test steak. Wow, okay, that already has a ton of salt in it. So we're not gonna add any extra salt. We're just gonna use our control steak with ground sea salt. Our other steak, we're gonna cover in umami. So let's get seasoning. Now in Canada, we don't actually have Trader Joe's. You'll see I'm using a Trader Joe spice rub here. But anytime we're down in the US, we'll get the everything but the bagel seasoning as well. You saw us do a steak experiment on that, which is a lot of fun. So again, eager to see how this umami steak ends up turning out. There's that one. Now just regular salt for the second steak. Now with these two guys seasoned up, let's go fire up that grill. So we've got our Kamado Joe set up for indirect cooking here and we've got it heated up to about 250 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're gonna crack the lid, get our two steaks on here, get these right in the middle, perfect, just like that. Now we're gonna use our meter temp probes, get those into the thickest part of the steaks here. Perfect. Do the same with the other one. So with the temp probes in here, we'll be able to monitor the internal temp of our steak and the ambient temperature at the grill grate level. So we'll make sure that this isn't going much in excess of 250. And we're looking for an internal here of 110 before we take these off. So we've just hit an internal of 110 on both of these steaks. Now we are running our grill a little bit hot. It got up to about 300 there, but that's fine get these off and we'll take these steaks inside just to keep them warm and then we'll get our grill set up for the direct sear so we can get a beautiful crust on each of these guys. So we've got this grill ripping hot. We've got the cast iron grates on here. And you can tell it's the right heat when you put your hand over and you can't really hold it there for even a second. So we're gonna get our two steaks down, give them that crust. So it's really important to be monitoring your temps here. So you'll see our steaks are still about that 110 range and we wanna make sure these come off at 128 because that's what we're looking for is a nice medium rare at 128. So we've got the flames coming up to kiss these steaks here. Just look at that crust. That looks incredible. Good crust formed on this one too. I'm just gonna flip them. We're still only at an internal here of about 112, 113. So we might have to flip these a couple times. Just look at that crust. All right, we've just hit an internal of 128 on both of these steaks. So we're gonna get them transferred over to the cutting board. So you can see both of these steaks turned out well. Both have really nice crusts. They smell incredible. I just can't wait to cut in, see how these guys turned out. 
All right, so now we're going in for a little bit of a taste test. First, we're gonna start with our regular steak over there, then our umami steak. Now, appearance-wise, these both have a very similar crust. Maybe the umami steak's a little bit darker just because this is, after all, a, a dark seasoning. But ultimately, it all comes down to taste. Mmm. Just melts in your mouth like butter. That is so good. Now, we're gonna go in for some umami steak. Wow. Another piece. Now that is really, really good. Umami is reminiscent of meat and that brothy, rich flavor profile. And you just get a ton of that on this. You cannot really understand why mushrooms pair so well with steak. Like it's one of the classic sides to have with your ribeye. So to actually get an umami seasoning and put that on your steak, it's just like absolutely the one-two punch. This, I'm really impressed with this. I actually to the point where this might become one of my go-to seasonings and I'd really recommend you give this a shot. You might actually end up preferring this over just a regular salt and pepper steak. So now we've got to get inside, let the family taste this. Now before we go, I just want to put up on the screen here a picture that we got from one of the viewers here on the channel making their own homemade bacon. They emailed us, they said they loved our homemade bacon recipe here on the channel and I thought this was worthy of a share. If you ever try any of our recipes, feel free to email them to us or DM them to us on Instagram or TikTok. We love it when we get to see what the community is doing with our recipes. So thanks for tuning in for this one. Now we're off to finish off these two steaks. Catch you on the next one.